Hey everybody, Omar here, the Knife Shark Guy, and I am back with another fun filled video for you. And today, I wanted to do a follow-up video on the last video that I did, which was looking into getting a custom. And uh, I'm speaking to the group of people who are at the point in their knife collecting where they've collected just about every... Uh, Benchmade, every ZT, every Spyderco, every limited edition, CRKT, whatever. And they've gone up through the ranks from the budget knives all the way up to the high-end knives. You know who you guys are. I know who you are because I was you and I'm actually still you. I'm still doing that, but I'm doing that on a limited basis because now most of my concentration is on customs. Now, the reason I'm saying this is because you're probably at that point in your knife collecting where you're not really getting that fun, recycled feeling that you used to get every time you got a new knife. It seems to be lasting shorter and shorter with each knife. So you seem to maybe you're getting to the point where you're not really appreciating your collection the way that you first did when you first had it. So I guess that's what this uh, video is for, people that are at that point in their knife collecting. And if that's where you are, where you are, and if that's what you're feeling, custom knives may be the answer for you, and it may not be. Uh, keep in mind, guys, this is an incredibly expensive hobby. Um, whatever it is that you spent on your Spyderco or your Zero Tolerance knife, it doesn't compare with the pricing of the knives that you're seeing in front of you. I mean, because these knives are incredibly expensive. Uh, that's that's number one. Number two, uh, having a collection like this shouldn't define you. It shouldn't mean that you're better than everybody else because you're not. Uh, in fact, I think it makes you the opposite. <laughs> uh, you know, people that don't have a collection like this, they've got money, so they're actually better off than we are. Uh, and I'm saying that jokingly. However, we do have in front of us some really cool art, right? So this video is for guys who are thinking about getting into a custom. They don't know how to buy a custom or where can I find one. Uh, number two, there are tons of places you could go to get a custom. They're all over on online. You can get one on eBay. Uh, and eBay is a really good place to start to get a custom because most of the guys that that sell on eBay, that sell their customs, and if you go on eBay right now, there's a ton out there right now. Um, they usually keep their knives in pristine almost if not, definitely brand new. They practically maybe flip those maybe once or twice. Why? Those knives are so damn expensive, man. They don't want to be, you know, cutting with them like you would a regular folder. I mean, stuff like this is, it's more than a knife, right? This is art. So eBay is a good place to start. Another place you can go to get an, uh, a custom knife would be like the Blade Gallery. Uh, if you go to thebladegallery.com, they've got a tons of... Uh, Tons of custom knives uh, there. In fact, that's where I started my collection was at the Blade Gallery. It happens in levels. So I started going there every week <laughs> and buying a custom. In fact, this was my very first custom that I ever bought. I still have it. I haven't sold it and I don't plan on selling it. This was uh, my John Arnold uh, custom uh, with Ambonia Wood Burl uh, G10 scales and uh, glow in the dark backspacer. I've never seen that. Uh, so, yeah, I went there and I saw this knife. I purchased it and, you know, off I went. Off I went. Uh, but after a while, uh, buying a few knives in the Blade Gallery, I wanted to, because people started talking about, well, I got my knife made for me. And I said, well, I want to experience that. What's that like? And uh, there, there are some do's and some don'ts if you want to go down that road uh, because it can be a really good experience for you if you want to have a custom knife made for you. Uh, it really isn't a problem because each one of the knife makers on this table, they're not hard to get a hold of. Uh, all you got to do is just keep trying and trying and trying to communicate with them. Usually they'll give you your e they'll give you their email. You can chat with them on Instagram. They're all over Instagram. I mean, I talk to Rukas Bumeris all the time. I talk to Andre Thorburn on on Instagram and on WhatsApp all the time. Uh, I I talk to Coasty Steenkamp quite a bit. Des Horn, I, he's my man. I mean, I've got his email. I email him all the time. In fact, I got a custom coming from him soon, probably by the end of this month. Uh, so you can get a hold of these guys. So that's not a problem, okay? Uh, another, number three, um, 
know what it is that you're going to be paying for. Uh, expect the price to be high on these knives. Now, just to get that out of the way, if you're not ready, I'll tell you. All the knives on this table, uh, because price is actually the last thing I like to talk about when it comes to my customs. Um, but all the knives on this table, uh, I'm going to tell you right now, each one of the knives on this table are over, uh, yeah, $600. Easy. Each knife is over six hundred. There's no no knife on this table is is less than six hundred dollars, um, and that's probably what you're going to pay averagely for a custom. So keep that price point in your mind. Um, are there uh, custom knife makers out there that will make you a knife for less? Yes, they will. But the reason I say six hundred is because if you're looking for, I guess, a knife. Of this, not this quality, but with this type of materials on it, you're gonna want to put the price point higher in your mind. That's just the way it is. Okay. Number two, knowing that um, you can go the dangerous route that I did and just put it all on a credit card, right? Which is what I did. Uh, I wouldn't recommend you guys doing that, by the way, because I know money is God, it's tight, especially these days we're in the middle of a pandemic. So, I mean, I know it's hard, and if you're looking at all this and you're tempted, if that's what you want to do, go and do it. But I would, uh, I, and I'm at that point in this video where I'm saying, uh, do as I say and not as I do. So what I would do if I were you is, yeah, I would put money aside each week on my paycheck and just work on one goal, getting one custom knife. Just get one. Just get one. And take your time in getting that piece. Take your time in figuring out what knives you like. Look on Instagram. Look at other people's collections. By the end of that road, you're going to know what kind of knife you want. And then that one knife will probably set the tone for the rest of your collection. Uh, so that's it for the price point and the, and the actual knife that you want to get. Uh, now we're going to go on to if I contact a knife maker. Uh, what do I, what comes next? Well, number one, treat them with respect. These guys do this for a living, you know, so yeah, they're going to charge you like 600 bucks for a knife, but keep this in mind. They probably, their costs for making these knives because the materials that are on these knives, guys, they are not cheap. White Westinghouse micarta is not cheap. Carbon fiber is not cheap. And the cost of actually putting a piece together like this uh, for you is not cheap. And the, their time isn't cheap. Uh, because while these guys do this for a living, who's not, who's not to say that they don't maybe make a mistake or maybe they're in the middle of a learning process? You got to kind of keep that in mind. These guys are artists, okay? They're making this knife because they love what they do for a living and they are happy that someone shows that much of an interest in what they do for a living to buy their product. Uh, so that's one of the things that you want to keep in mind. So you're going to want to treat them with respect. Um, ordering a knife, uh, that can be as easy as just picking a model on their website and choosing the materials. Uh, if you are someone who's a little bit picky, be careful not to be too picky because there are guys out there, there I can tell you right now, there are experienced knife buyers uh, that really delve into um, the making of their custom knife along with the knife maker. And doing that, they can actually frustrate the knife maker. <laughs> you know, in other words, they'll sit there and, and they'll get way too much into the details and like and say things like, well, can we have the backspacer have a little, you know, a, a little picture of like uh, a lizard on it? Can we do... You know, like White Westinghouse with a much more, you know, a little bit more of a textured design. All that kind of stuff that you throw onto a knife maker. They may say yes or they may say no, right? Uh, but keep this in mind. With each item that you decide you want the item done a certain way, that's going to delay the production of your knife. Now, time frame on one of a, on a custom knife. 
uh, especially if you're looking to get what's called a one-of-a-kind. Now, one-of-a-kind knives, you don't have to go through the route of getting a knife maker to make one for you. If you're looking for that experience, by all means, go for it. Uh, if you're willing to compromise along with the knife maker who's making your custom piece. Otherwise, you can find a nice common, a nice one-of-a-kind uh, knife on a place like Blade Gallery. Because a lot of times, custom knife makers, they will pump out uh, eight different one-of-a-kinds in a row. Commission a place like the Blade Gallery to put them up for sale for them. And uh, they sell one of their knives and you get a one-of-a-kind custom. Maybe it wasn't made for you, but the knife that you're going to be getting, you'll never see another one like it again. So, And when we mean one-of-a-kind, basically we're talking about not the model of the knife, because the model of this Andre Thorburn is, you know, there's tons of these knives out there. When we mean one-of-a-kind, we mean the handle configuration of the knife. There's probably a knife out there. In fact, I know there's a knife out there that looks similar to mine, but the backspacer is different, right? Um, the way the eagle was put on the knife is completely different than mine. Mine has more color. The other guy that I saw on Instagram, his was a little bit more monochromed. Um, so you can get a one-of-a-kind piece, and uh, the answer is, well, how do you know you're getting a one-of-a-kind piece? The knife maker tells you that he's getting a one-of-a-kind hand, uh, handmade piece. Uh, and you're going to want to, and, and you can take their word for it, why they've got a reputation to uphold. All these knife makers have a reputation to uphold. So don't bog them down with way too many materials. Um on on their you know that you would want to have on your knife um keep it limited you know to things like well i want to have m390 steel or i would like to have a composite blade or yeah i'm happy with uh carbon fiber like color changing a red car uh, the carbon fiber on your knife that's not that big a deal uh that won't delay your knife that much but i mean if you're gonna go and get cotton picky on it you might actually frustrate and piss off the knife maker uh to the point where they may not want to do business with you anymore so keep that in mind. Uh, the more stuff you want on your knife, the longer it's going to delay your knife, the more you're going to frustrate the knife maker, and it won't be a good experience for him, and it's certainly not going to be a good experience for you. Um, third, and probably next to last thing, is payment. Um, don't ever pay up front for a custom knife. There are knife makers that do that, and uh, I don't believe in it. And I have spoken to some customers on Instagram who actually do that, and they're happy with their product because they actually do get their product. But uh, not plunking down cash before you get the knife. Uh, I can honestly tell you most South African knife makers don't do that. I don't know any South African knife maker on this table that does that. Uh, and I'm strictly only talking about South African customs because that's the direction of my custom uh, my, my customs collection is only South Africa. That's my own personal preference. You can go any way you want. But I can honestly tell you, there is no custom knife maker on this table that will accept payment before the knife is made. They usually pay on delivery. And I'll tell you a little secret, and I don't want to take advantage of this secret, but I, I, I know knife makers who actually deliver the knife to you uh, the decent thing that most, I'm sorry, most custom knife makers will deliver the knife to you, okay? Have you look at the knife, inspect the knife, look at it, make sure it's to your liking. And obviously, if you don't like it, they'll allow you to go ahead and return it, provided that it's not scratched or whatever. Uh, because they just want to make sure that you're happy. They want to see you happy. Don't forget, they know how much money you paid for their knife. So that's important. Um, but... Yeah, you don't ever want to plunk down cash before receiving the knife. Most South African knife makers pay upon delivery. That's on their side. On your side, okay, commit. Commit to payment. Once they make the knife, commit to payment. That's for the protection of you and the protection of the knife maker, and nobody gets their feelings hurt. This is a business, guys, okay? As much as you want the enjoyment of owning a custom knife. This is still a business. They are still business guys. Yes, they are artists. 
Yes, they want you to buy their product. Yes, they want to enjoy it, but you want to take everything into consideration when you go down the route of custom knife making. So just kind of stay on the fence on everything. Uh, lay yourself back. You know who you are, and you know what you want, and you know how decently to treat people. Um, and that's what you want to do. If you know, look at it this way: you're a good person. They're a good person. They make a product that you want. You don't want to take advantage of anything, and they don't want to take advantage of you. If you want to stay that line, adhere to those rules. So when the customer completes the night, commit to payment. Make sure you've got... I'm not saying make sure you've got the money, but make sure you're committed to the item. You don't want to just sit there and say, Oh, I'm so sorry um, that you made the, the knife for me, but now I can't pay for it. Does that happen? Yes, I'm sure it does. Uh, will the knife maker understand? I'm going to be honest with you. Yes and no. It depends on the knife maker that you're dealing with. Um, but out of professionalism, you know what I mean? It's not good. So try to commit to having that payment when the knife is completed. Especially if you've inspected the knife, you've looked at it, and you've uh, had some time with it, and you decide, okay, I'm going to go ahead and pay them. Um, Definitely take that into consideration. Um, and I guarantee this much, your experience will be 110% awesome. Because now, with the purchase of that one knife, the knife maker knows who you are. He knows that he's had a really great experience with you buying the knife. Um, you know, and now you build a rapport with this guy that you can go back to him again right? And order another knife. And guess what? This knife maker's got friends, you know? Cozy Steen Camp is probably friends with Andre Thorburn. These two guys talk. Maybe Cozy Steen Camp went to Andre Thorburn and said, hey, do you know Omar? He goes, yeah, I know Omar. He's a great guy. I, he bought two, three knives from me. He's fantastic. You're going to love working with him. You're building a rapport. These guys know each other. The, the the South African knife community, and I'm probably pretty sure this is the same way with the entire custom community. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But this seems to be my experience. Remember, everything I'm saying in this video is my experience only. They're a community, so they you know they know who's a good customer, who's not a good customer, uh, and they kind of you know, they kind of keep that to themselves. But I mean, pretty much. It's all on you in that way. How you present yourself to the knife maker. How they see you. Are you a stand-up person? Or are you, you know... <laughs> are you like a piece of shit that's going to screw with them? So you want to be careful. You want to walk that line and and have a relationship with these people that, that they're going to want to go to you again and again and again. And guess what? The time that you reach these guys is going to be shorter and shorter and shorter. I mean, you'll probably get to the point where you text them and they just answer you right away. So, definitely build that relationship with each knife maker. And obviously, that starts out with hello. And you may not get an answer when you first start. Keep trying. Keep trying. I guarantee you, you will, uh, you will uh, get contact with them. Because these guys are always looking for business. They're always looking to make you know, a new customer. Um, and at the same time, it also becomes a personal experience because I'm actually pretty good friends with Death's Horn. I'm not saying I know everything in his family, but we talk. We don't have a problem talking about anything, uh, not just knives. Same thing with Kosi Steenkamp. I mean, same thing with Andre Thorburn. We like to talk. We, you know, they open up to you. It doesn't have to always be about knives. They're, they're willing to talk if they have time. So, um... That all builds into you getting a custom knife from them. So it's a completely different experience. So uh, definitely, you know, walk in with both feet, walk in with caution. Um, try to be decent to these people. Um, don't, also another thing too is you don't want to, um, if the experience wasn't good, it just wasn't good. But I wouldn't go and... Uh, you know, trash the entire knife community because your experience you, 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 because your experience wasn't good. The 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 custom knife world uh, is a world where 
you know, you want to kind of just approach with caution and and try to to work your way into their world. I think that's the best way I could say it. Work your way in. Uh, it sounds kind of corny, but work your way into their hearts and and open up to them and let them know, you know. Uh, you know, listen, I really admire your work. I love the way you make your knives. Could you please make me something? You know, you want to kind of, you know, stay, you know, I'm, I'm not saying butter them up. I mean, if you want to use that word, butter them up. But I mean, just build a relationship with them. The same way you would build a relationship with anybody. Um, just try and make it more about the relationship than the actual knife. I think that's the best way I can put it. And your knife experience will always be really, really great. Um, and pretty much that's it. I mean, if you don't understand a lot about the materials, guess what? The knife maker's going to help you. That's another thing. If you don't know the material, sometimes they'll even suggest the material um, that would make, that would be a little bit more, you know, they'll suggest a the material that would be a little bit more elegant. Like, for example, I, I told... I think I told uh, Andre Thorburn that I'm kind of tired of carbon fiber. I have like a ton of carbon fiber on all my knives. Don't you guys have something different? Then he said, well, White Westinghouse is a really nice material. I said, ooh, what's that? And he described it to me, and I, and he showed me a knife with that material on it. I noticed that it, how pretty it was. and um, I mean, it was just a, you know, just a, and each time I spoke with him, I was, I was learning something new. Um, and if you're lucky... If you are lucky, you get to the point where, let's say you've had, you've, you've had like five custom knives made for you. Uh, word of mouth from each of the knife makers that you're really a, a killer customer. You might get something like this, which is a, a true one-of-a-kind handmade piece. This knife is very special to me. Both of these knives are real special to me. Um, this one here is kind of special because, yeah, it's a one-of-a-kind handmade piece, but there's a piece, and this knife was made by J.D., L, by J.D., by Johan Ellis, J.D. Ellis, um, he made this knife for me, it's a 4th of July knife, um, with Damascus, and, uh, it's a slip joint, and I told him to make me a 4th of July knife, and, uh, he said, yeah, I could certainly do that. I'd like to try to make stars, because I've never made stars before. So this was the only knife that he's ever made at that time that ever had stars on it. So now I'm kind of happy to own it, you know. And I only contacted him just that one time. Uh, yeah, again, you, to get something made like this depends on your personality and, and how you are with these with people. Um... You know, a lot of times the, the relationship works out, sometimes it doesn't. But, you know, if, you, if you've if you got a pretty good personality and, you, and you, you've got a really nice way with people where you know how to be nice to people, you can pretty much get anything you want here within reason. Um, and, of course, as far as pricing, uh, the customers will also work with you. You don't have to spend uh, $600 on a knife, you can ask them, well, what's, I mean, don't be ashamed to ask them, well, what's the lowest you can, I can get, uh, a custom knife for from, from you, they're willing to work with you on that, it doesn't have to be over the top, incredibly expensive, whatever the deal might be, um, knife, you can still get a really good priced custom knife, uh, that would be better than any production knife you that, that's actually out there. That can still happen for you. Uh, so keep that in mind. It's not really about the money. It's about the relationships. And it's about the artistry that's involved in making these knives. And the journey that it takes to get there, you know. Because each one of these knives now that I collect has a story, I mean, to it to some degree. Um... And for me, the journey is going to continue with, you know, with each custom knife that I buy. So to go over the rules again before I, because I'm going to close out this video now. Number one, uh, treat the knife makers with respect, okay? Uh, number two, when it comes to uh, custom knives, commit to payment, 
You know what I mean? If you've already worked with a night maker and you've um, decided on a one-of-a-kind handmade piece, especially if it's a one-of-a-kind handmade piece, because they made that piece just for you. And for you to kind of just say, I'm sorry that I can't pay for it, you know, that kind of hurts because the guy spent all the time making the knife for you and he was expecting payment and now payment isn't going to be there. So commit to payment if you can, whether you do it with a credit card, which is the dangerous way that I did it, or whether you're smart, smarter than me and actually saved your money to get your first custom. I would definitely consider doing that. Save up your money to get a custom. There's no reason why you can't wait because these guys aren't going anywhere. It would be nice for you to have like a wad of $600 to save up and then when the time comes, you can choose your knife maker and then the knife's here and then you just pay for it. Nothing more gratifying than that. Um, number three, don't get bogged down by the details of the materials on the knife. Don't keep changing the configuration of the knife. Don't keep changing the steel because that's gonna delay the knife even longer. Not only that, but it's gonna frustrate the knife maker who's making your knife for you. Uh, so you wanna be careful that you don't do that. Uh, and it's probably gonna happen. <laughs> but try not to have that happen to you. Know what you want and just stick with the one plan that you and the knife maker agreed to. Um, and number three, uh, yeah, again, treat these guys with respect. And m the number four also, I forgot there's a number four. If there's something on the knife, let's say you paid for the knife, all right? And it's all paid up and all good to go and everything. He sends it to you. You paid for the knife. And then you look at the knife and maybe it's got a scratch on it. Or maybe it's not as perfect as you hoped it would be. Do not be afraid to contact the knife maker and tell them, look, my knife doesn't look as great as I as I thought it would be. This the knife is a little bit off centered. I didn't expect that. Or there's uh you know one of the um one of one of the, the pieces on the back spacer doesn't look quite right to me. It doesn't look like it's you know maybe it's scratched or something. Don't be afraid to contact them. Because uh, nothing is going to piss them off more than the fact that they sold you a knife. You're taking the knife from them. You paid for the knife. Uh, and you're not really happy with it. Nothing pisses them off more than that. Because basically, um, you're letting... Not only are you letting the knife maker get away with that. But you're not allowing the customer... Or not the customer. But you're not allowing the knife maker to give you his best. And that's wrong. Allow the knife maker to give you his best. Uh, case in point, I will tell you. This is a knife that I got from the Rucus Blumeris. Uh, this is a true one-of-a-kind handmade piece. This is also called a full dress piece, where every piece of the knife has some sort of art on it. As you can see, everything, including the pocket clip, which is blue. Uh... And, of course, even the backspacer is Damascus. So this is what's called a full dress piece. When I first purchased this knife from the Blade Gallery, uh, the knife was way off-centered. I mean, it was, like, all the way over in that direction. And I lived with it for a really long time uh, when I first purchased the piece. I lived with it for so long uh, that eventually one day it just drove me nuts. And uh, I contacted a Rucus Blumeris. And he was so depressed that my knife wasn't up to, uh, to my expectations. And what, what was so weird was I didn't even have the knife made for me. I bought it at the Blade Gallery. And he was actually pretty disappointed in himself that the knife was not perfect. And I'm going to tell you right off the bat, at least as far as South African knife makers go, they all feel that way. If you don't, if you see something on your knife that you don't like, maybe it's got a scratch on it, maybe it's got some sort of imperfection on it, maybe the knife is off-centered, whatever the deal might be, whatever it is that you know doesn't look right to you, tell them about it. Because if you're not telling them about it, you're not doing them any good, and you're not doing yourself any good, and you're not doing... 
the custom night world any good by settling with that imperfection on the night that you're not happy with that you paid eight hundred or seven hundred dollars for so that's wrong make sure that you're really happy with the piece that you have in your hand uh don't be afraid to contact these guys they're not by any means uh you know above themselves if they do if they if they missed something on one of their pieces they want to know about it believe me these guys spent a lifetime doing this kind of work a lifetime and for you to live with their uh work not being as perfect as you expected again you're not doing them any favors and you're not doing yourself any favors and you're not doing the knife community any favors because guess what happens if a bunch of people started doing that when they had custom knives made for them, guess what happens? The quality of the work involved in custom knife making goes down. So if you're not happy, tell them you're not happy. Because that's the worst thing you can do. And uh, with that thought, I don't know. I can't think of anything else other than I hope this video has been helpful to you. If it hasn't, I apologize. If it was another rambling again, I apologize. Uh, but I hope you picked up some tips from this video. Uh, if you have any questions, which I think are probably the best way to uh, get anything out of this video, is to leave some comments, some questions, uh, Anything. It could be about even just the knives that are on this table. Um, if you want to know about any of the knife makers and, you know, what they do or or what kind of knife that is that I have here on the table and you want to know about it, um, feel free to leave a question or a comment on it. And uh, before I close out real quickly, I'm just going to tell you the knife makers for all of these. This one was made by Deshorn. Uh, this one was made by John Arnold. This one was made by Kosi Steenkamp. This one was made by uh, J.D. Ellis, Andre Thorburn. This is a collaborative knife by Andre Thorburn and uh, uh, Andre Van Heerden. This one is by Arucus Blumeris. And this one is by Andre Van Heerden. These are all South African knives, custom knives. Uh, and so far within this hobby, it has been a great experience buying from each one of these guys at one point or another. Uh, and even just buying at the Blade Gallery, it's been a great experience. Um, and to be honest with you, the money should be the least of your concerns when it comes to this hobby. You're looking for the overall packaged experience when you get into this. So this is Omar the Knife Shark Guy signing off, hoping that this video has been some helpful, has been some of some help to you guys that are getting a little itchy for something different in the knife world and you want to walk down this world of custom knife making. I cannot speak for any Russian knife makers or any uh, or any of or any Ru Russian knife makers or any American knife makers or any Italian knife makers or Chinese knife. All I know. Is South African. So if you want to ask me something specific, specific about South African knife makers, I may be more than likely I'll be able to answer it. Uh, if not, I'll get the answer for you. So to all you guys watching this video and have been following my channel, I want to say thank you. I've got more to come in the brand new year of 2021. Like I said, I have a brand new night coming by the end of this month. I'm not going to say who it is, but obviously I'm going to show it off. Uh, tomorrow, I've got a couple of wallets, because I also review wallets. So I've got a couple of wallets, leather wallets, that I'm going to be reviewing. From a brand new wallet company that has only been out for a year. Um, it's funny, because this doesn't have a pocket clip. I can't tell which way is the right way. Um, I guess that would be it. Yeah, so this has been an overall experience. It's been a pleasure tonight to talk to you about this incredibly expensive hobby that I absolutely love. I really do hope that some of you guys out there will catch the bug. Uh, you know, hopefully it'll be a good experience. It's going to have been an experience for you as it has been for me. And uh, finally, I want to leave you with this. Yeah, finally, do not do the credit card thing that I did. <laughs> 
please don't do that. Save your money up first, then get the knife, man. I'm telling you, you're going to be stressed out once that credit card keeps going up there because that's what happened to me. And, you know, I'm so happy that my credit card down debt is now down to 400 bucks. It was really, really hard. When you're into this, when you're into the hobby as hard as I am and you love this hobby as much as I do, it's almost like every day you want a new knife. Um, yeah, I'm just so, I actually went a while without charging the credit card and I'm happy that, that I got that credit card debt down. So yeah, don't go into, um, yeah, don't go into severe debt with the credit card for this hobby, uh, if you decide to go this route. So this is Omar, the Knife Shark Guy, signing off, saying happy knife hunting to all you guys and, uh, have a good evening and I do hope this video was of some use to you. Thanks so much and have a great night.